there. Today we are finishing up our series on the book of Acts. So thank you so much for hanging in there as we have worked our way through this long series and this long book of the Bible. Acts wasn't something that I was super familiar with before this study, so I have really enjoyed um, reading commentaries and more scripture and diving into this book. Um, especially during this series to prepare for the Bible study. So I hope that you have also enjoyed it. But before I forget, like I've done for several of the studies now, I believe, especially for these videos, I wanted to go ahead and give you the theme for this final session and our focus verse. So the theme is going to be for the renewal of the world. And our focus verse is actually going to be the last um, couple verses in the book of Acts. So it's Acts 2, verses 30 and 31. So having these two things, um, a theme and a focus verse, um, having these two things prepared has really kept me on track while um, creating these studies. So we're going to talk about the focus verse again at the end of this video, but I wanted to go ahead and lay it out <coughs> just so I don't forget. But I wanted to do a brief review of last week also. So we began by talking about Paul in Athens, where Paul was very saddened to see all the different idols that these people were worshiping. Paul preaches to these people who have completely different views on God than Paul has. Um, we learned that some people believed Paul and were converted and other people mocked him and laughed at him. Um, so there's kind of two different ends of the spectrum going on there. We also looked at Paul's pretty heartfelt speech to the elders in Ephesus. Now this was his only speech to a Christian audience and it was the last one before his arrest. So Paul gives this group, the Ephesians elders, a few different charges as he prepares to leave them. He tells them that they need to keep the faith, that they need to stay strong, that they need to look out for one another. So in a way, it seems like this is also Paul's charge to the church today. So it's kind of Paul's own charge to us who are reading this book many, many, many years later. Um, we're kind of called into that charge as well. So tonight we are going to kind of hit the final section of Acts. So we're going to pick, pick up where we left off last week um, with Paul's speech in Ephesus in his third witness trip. And this trip continues on in a pretty foreboding way. So Paul travels to Caesarea where a prophet says that Paul will be handed over to the Roman authorities. Paul's friends then urge him not to go to Jerusalem, but Paul responds that he is ready to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord. So as we know, Paul is very dedicated to the gospel. We have seen his character arc all throughout this book. Um, first, by persecuting Christians, especially in seeing his approval of Stephen's killing, the first Christian martyr, to then seeing Paul going around and preaching to all to a lot of different communities, and now being willing to die for the gospel. So that's quite a turnaround from when we first, first met Paul. So eventually Paul is arrested back in Jerusalem, and he ends up going on trial before a lot of different religious leaders. This takes up a big section of this um, part of the book of Acts, and we're not going to be able to read all of it, but he goes before trial um, before the Sanhedrin, which is like the Jewish courts. Um, he goes on trial before Governor Felix, 
Governor Festus and King Agrippa. Now you would think that all of these trials and all this prison time would be a setback for Paul because we know that Paul is called to be on the road, creating new Christian communities and preaching and supporting and loving these Christian communities. But as we have learned, the Spirit is always on the move, especially here in the book of Acts. And this imprisonment gives Paul time to compose several of his most famous, and some say some of his more important apostolic letters. And these letters that Paul writes become the way that his legacy is continued on long after he dies. So this time in prison, in prison gave him plenty of time to compose these letters. So Paul's prison letters, just in case you're interested, are said to be Colossians, Philippians, Philemon, and Ephesians. So eventually, Paul is transferred as a prisoner to Rome, and he ends up on house arrest in Rome as he awaits his delayed trial. But while on house arrest, he is able to host in quite a nice house regular meetings that reach both Jews and Gentiles. So I'm going to read the um, very final few verses in Acts now, and these are what serves as our focus verse, verses for today. So very short piece of scripture for this morning. So it's Acts 28 verses 30 through 31. And so... The reading beacons. He, Paul, lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So these final verses in Acts, um, they are about how Paul is announcing the kingdom of God still and boldly teaching all about Jesus without hindrance. So totally unhindered. And all of this is taking place right under Caesar's nose. So even though Paul is imprisoned, the gospel is still openly proclaimed. And so that finishes the book of Acts. And although the author does not narrate Paul's trial or death here in this book, the author has provided ample indication that that is what lies ahead. It's just not here in Acts, so we're not going to cover it during this study. So I'm looking forward to discussing this final chunk of scripture in the book of Acts tonight. So even if you have missed the other previous Wednesday studies on the book of Acts, you are more than welcome to join for this final one tonight at 7 o'clock through Zoom. So I hope to see you there this evening. But for now, we will close our time in prayer. So the Lord be with you also with you. Let us pray. Living God, we give you thanks for the authors, the authors in the New Testament that wrote down stories not only of Jesus but of the early church. We thank you for their witness and their boldness. I ask that you strengthen us to have such a bold witness as these first authors did. We thank you for the life of Paul and how he can, he can be an example of um, strong faith to us even today. We give you thanks that um, you're able to gather us into community even when we are apart. Send your spirit of peace and comfort and wholeness and love to all of those at AMF especially during this time when we are away. 
remind AMF that they are loved and that there's nothing that they can do that can separate them from your love. Remind us that you are always with us and that you do indeed watch over us. Strengthen us as we continue on in these long weeks of social distancing. Um, keep us strong in faith. In your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, people of AMF, and I hope to see you this evening.